So, like I, like uh, David mentioned, my name is Milos. Uh, I'll be talking about a Go package which I built for, well, essentially, it's a Go package which will allow you to configure your networks programmatically, um, not just like doing it properly without shelling out, which we normally do. So, initially, when I started working on this project, it was it was supposed to be fixing Docker networking, but eventually I figured out that this could actually be useful for configuring um, Linux networking in general. Uh, so this is a little bit about myself. I used to work for Rackspace, then for a couple of startups in UK, uh, in US as well, just remotely. Currently I'm just freelancing, and I'm an ops guy. So if any of you follow me on Twitter, you will see lots of like, ranting tweets about technology, and not only about technology, because let's face it, ops guys are professional ranters. Um, and also I'm a, pro I'm, a, I'm a programming language tourist, so I like learning new, new languages, and, and I've recently fallen in love with Go, so that's also why I built the package in Go. Well, one of the reasons. So without further ado, I have all the biggest buzzwords, Go and Docker, so Let's just get this started. So the whole DocNet thing came out about when I was just, I started being really interesting in networking in Linux containers. So I wrote this blog post because there has been a lot of talk about Docker and like Linux containers in general, and no one really understood like how the networking actually works and why, why Docker doesn't provide the networking functionality it should. Well, basically, it gives you one interface, and that's just about it, which you can't really do much about. So, so I investigated. It. I, I was looking into this, and I just realized, like, I, if I want to find out about this, I have to start digging into Docker source code, uh, and I couldn't also find any properly functional Go library which would allow you to programmatically set up a networking on Linux operating system. So. This, like I mentioned, this came about and everybody was talking about application delivery and everything was surrounded. So people just started dockerizing everything and there was been lots of buzz around Docker and there still is. But people are forgetting about one important thing. If you want to deliver an application, you need to deliver a supporting infrastructure. And let's face it, like we're all coming from different backgrounds and I used to work for enterprise companies and also for startups, and like you get to you get to face very esoteric networking infrastructures, networking setups, and if you want to use Docker in those in those networking infrastructures and networking setups, you essentially can't really do much around it because Docker doesn't provide the functionality for you to enable it. So they what what Docker guys are doing, they're just hacking around it by setting up all kinds of like IP tables, and then Jerome, one of the Docker guys, he wrote this tool called Pipework, you may have heard about this, which is basically a shell script, which allows you to uh, configure the networks to Docker. So like I said, it, in my opinion, network is crucial and essential part of the infrastructure, and if you ever work for an enterprise company, you had to face this. Like, I had to ask Google, we, do see insane IT network infrastructures constantly. So, so I said I, I said about like to f to try to fix this initially. I didn't know how much effort it would be. So I realized if I if I want to avoid shelling out, which is which I really really wanted, just to do it natively, I realized I actually have to interact with kernel directly. And the way to do is is um, via netlink, which is a um, facility in Linux kernel which allows you to come communicate with the kernel from the user space. So, and that Netlink is basically just like a messaging protocol, which allows you to configure various pieces of, of, of your kernel. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a network. It can be pretty much any kernel subsystems, but obviously this talk is about network. So there is a another library called RT Netlink. I don't honestly know what RT means, because as much as I try to find out what it actually means, I couldn't. I even checked out the Linux kernel code, it doesn't actually explain what RT means. But anyways, this is the this is the library which allows you to construct messages which are then encapsulated by netlink 
and then you can send those messages to kernel to tell him something like, oh, I want a new network interface, or I want this interface to have this IP, and I want this gateway, whatever. Just imagine IP root tool, but um, so IP root essentially is using RT Netlink. Uh, so I, I just started looking about, uh, I, start, I started looking for a Go binding for Netlink, and I literally could find only two packages. One of them is called Go Netlink, but that is essentially die, and it's like, it's not even more, like, I think it was developed like four years ago, and it hasn't been touched since. So it was released as an open source. I'm not sure about the license, but um, I guess it was written in a very early version of Go back then. And then another one is another Go, a Netlink package, um, was the one written by the Docker guys. And that's like, that's more idiomatic Go, and it's still massively work in progress. And you can see it also because it's completely broken. Um, well, not completely, it works to a certain degree, but once you want to do more complicated, more advanced networking with it, you can't. So I realized like if I want to fix this, I had to, I had to fix the Netlink uh, package in Docker. So I spent about a week uh, fixing it. Eventually, I managed to do it. It, it's, it was a slightly painful process because whenever you communicate with kernel, you basically are sending a stream of bytes and you miss one byte, you miss one piece of something somewhere and kernel is just not happy. It's just, no, I'm not doing anything. So eventually, eventually I figured it out. I found a bunch of bugs and once I fixed that, I was able to add the extra functionality into the Netlink package, which was missing, or which is, is actually still missing because I haven't pushed my changes upstream to the Docker. Um, there is a rather painful procedure for this at the moment if you want to contribute to Docker. So, so I, that has been done. So it's only done in my, in, my, in my Docker fork. Actually, the Netlink package has been moved to a separate package called uh, libnetlink. So, so I built this tool, it's called DocNet, but it's not necessarily tied to DocNet itself. So you can, you can use it for any, like I said, any Linux networking. Um, so if you like hacking on Go, this is an awesome way to start. Um, this is just a, maybe I should just skip these and just do the live demo so that I don't talk um, all the time. Uh, I'm gonna ask Brian, hold the microphone next to my face. <laughs> Cool. So, some of you who, uh, if you ever played with Docker, you know uh, the networking in Docker is like, so when you install Docker, when you create a new container, it will create a Docker bridge, and it will give you a pair of web devices, and it will stick one of the devices into Docker container, and it will bridge the other one into the host bridge. And it will basically, that's, that's, that's as much networking as you can, as you, as you can do. You, you can't do pretty much anything else. So there are like much more complex scenarios like I mentioned, and they're all mentioned, just like have a look at the, um, the, the blog post I wrote a while ago. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you something very quickly. Like maybe, can you help? Can you guys see? I mean, it's probably not very important, but it's gonna be open source. Uh, it's just not ready yet. 
just want to show you like quickly it's basically the package will give you like a simple programming interface which you can use in, in your in your go programs so let's say you want to let's say you want to do something like macvlan and stick one of the Mac, macvlan devices in a docker so what this will do it essentially is essentially going to create a new link it will push it into docker and it will it will configure the ip networking and everything else so you will you will have a macvlan device inside a docker on top of already existing um, network interfaces there so it's basically i guess there isn't much point to show you this we can just go into this and i'm just going to Probably familiar with the command I run. Um, I've just created a new Docker container. As you can see. So, so this is the this is the the network namespace part of the wet pair device dev created on the on the host. So you can see the Docker automatically creates this inside, and it will configure it automatically. So you're able to communicate with it. So now let's stick the MacVLAN device. Yes, I can indeed. Shall we, let me think. Maybe we should just do this. Is it good? Awesome. So like I said, let's, Let's create a McVeelan device. Let's see if this is actually going to work. It should. <laughs> uh. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. The Docker I was trying to push that MacVillan interface is actually a different name in the code, so I need to delete the, the old interfaces. Is another Mac MacVLAN device created on a host because the, the one I created is, is so the whole point of MacVLAN interfaces is to separate the container traffic from the actual like OS host traffic. So if I didn't create this one, this, this MacVLAN device, and I didn't bridge it into the host device, I wouldn't be able to ping the interface which is in a Docker. So Docker. 
So there is there is basically the package will give you the ability to do like all the advanced networking you can do currently with LXCs, but you can't do with Docker. So it's a library basically. I'm hoping that Docker guys will eventually get it in in a Docker. I don't know if they're interested. Uh, well, actually, they kind of are, but we'll see how it goes eventually. So I can show you later on, like if you're interested about other, like more advanced scenarios, uh, networking scenarios you can do with Docker. And yes, I'm not hiring. But if you're interested in hacking on Go and Docker, and if you like this, and you want to be involved, just just get in touch. And because at the moment it's just me working on this, and there were supposed to be two guys from Docker, but they just, I guess, got busy and just dropped out a little bit. But that's it for me.